you should find in yourself an inspiration and a desire to pursue a particular passion and that should be there before you've even thought about vocation it, it should be something that you find yourself doing if your passion is to be a writer but every person who knows you well who you trust as an advisor and a counselor is saying to you you're wasting your time that's something that you should listen to that doesn't mean that you're not called to be a writer it just means that perhaps you're not called to write for a newspaper or not that newspaper. So you might try a different newspaper. You might try a blog. And you might find that people are receptive to the blog. There are some things that we can do that when we do them, we have the skill to do them, we have the opportunity to do them, but in the process of doing them, we find that they make us into worse people. somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic and I am here enjoying a, a small slice of paradise known as Merida, Merida, Merida Island. Is that right? Madeira. Madeira. Madeira Island. Um, and we want to talk about vocations. Vocation is that thing that is God's calling to you. It is the um, that that sense of yourself, that in, that that desire within yourself to do something that's in accord with God's will. And many Christians ask themselves, right? Well, you know, what is my calling? How do I find my calling? What should I do with my calling? You know, do I have a calling? Um, and, and how do you know what God wants you to do? So. that you can think about your vocation. And the, 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 the talk that I'm going to be giving is based loosely on the writings of St. Ignatius of Loyola. So firstly, a calling, I'm gonna give you some principles by which you can identify what your calling is. And I'm going to use as my working example, being a writer. So a, vocay, a calling is, is firstly something that you have a passion for, a desire to do, something that intrinsically, naturally, you, you've just got this interest to do. It's something that you find yourself imagining. It's something that you find yourself trying to do. It's something you, you find yourself doing already, but in, not in any sort of skilled way. And then from this, 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 vocation that one of this that's one of the first principles is is to identify what are your passions where, where are your passions coming from do you have a passion to be a writer do you have a passion for writing are you writing already and then the, the next thing that you have to ask yourself that, that, that one of the first principles uh, after the principle of, of identification of your passion is the principle of does it contradict scripture well, does it? Does it contradict scripture? Clearly not, because the scriptures are written. So in our working example, being a writer doesn't contradict scripture. So it, it ticks the first box. And then once you've identified whether it does or does not contradict the scripture, the next thing that you need to ask yourself is, do I have a talent for it? I mean, there are people that want to be writers, but they can't write for toffee. And if you are one of these people that is writing and you're, you can't write decently, you can't write well, it doesn't matter how much of a passion you've got. If you haven't got the skill to do it, then it's not your calling. It's just a, an imagination, a fantasy. But then the, the question is, Okay, so if I have the passion for it and I have the skill to do it, do I have the opportunity? So this is something that Christians 
um, called pushing on the doors. You know, if you push on a door and it, it's not opening, it, it's not what God wants you to do. So if you have a passion for something and it's not contradicting scripture, the, the, and you have a skill for it and something that you are able to do, do you have the opportunity to do it? You might be doing it personally, privately, for your own sake, but if no one is ever publishing what you're doing and no one is ever interested in what you're writing and you're never getting the opportunity to do it in any, any way that's published, whatever the format of writing is that you might want to publish, whether on the internet or in a publishing company or so on, if you haven't got that opportunity to publish, then your skill has not found opportunity. Interestingly, I, I want to disconnect the idea that opportunity equals pay. Because you might have the opportunity to do something and never be paid for it. That doesn't mean if you're not being paid for it, it's not your calling. Many people have callings for which they don't get paid. It's just something to consider. So you've asked yourself, is it an intrinsic passion? Is it something that you have a, a natural desire for? You've asked yourself, is it something that contradicts the scriptures? You've asked yourself, is this something to which I have a skill and an ability to do? You've asked yourself, do I have an opportunity to do it? So skill is meeting opportunity, talent is meeting opportunity. The next thing that, that you should, principle you should practice is the counsel of the saints, which is that There should be people that hopefully know you well enough to know if this is you, in quote marks. You see, if your passion is to be a writer, but every person who knows you well, who you trust as an advisor and a counsellor, is saying to you, you're wasting your time, that's something that you should listen to. Likewise, if people or saying to you, do you know Summer, I can see you being a writer. If they're saying to you, actually, you've got a real skill for this, you should think of, you know, have you thought about being a writer? Have you thought about writing for a paper or setting up a blog? If people are saying that kind of thing to you and these are people that you know and trust, you should listen to them. The council of the saints, the people who know you best within the church, who, who have your, your best intentions at their heart. So then, the, the next thing that you have to ask yourself is, if by doing it, do I make myself a better person or a worse person? And what I mean by this is that there are some things that we can do that when we do them, we have the skill to do them, we have the opportunity to do them, but in the process of doing them, we find that they make us into worse people. They find that they harm us, that it injures us. So let me give you an example. Say you're a writer and you end up having the opportunity to work for a newspaper, but when you're working for the newspaper, what you find is that you end up having to lie to distort the truth, to get your articles published. You find that actually you have to misrepresent things. Then that means that either you shouldn't be a news reporter, or maybe it's saying you shouldn't be a writer. Because what you do should draw you closer to God and to make you into a better person all round. And if it doesn't, it's not your vocation, it's not your calling. Or it may be that it is your vocation and calling, but the particular way you've chosen to express it is not. And thus you need to find a better way to express your vocation, your calling. And then there is what is, call, what is called confirmations. Confirmations are very similar to um, the Council of the Saints. It's very similar to that idea that people are saying to you, oh, you should be doing this, but confirmations can also be negative. So let me explain. Let us imagine someone you know is a bad influence on you. They encourage you in such a way to do things that draw you away from your Christian faith. 
and they are the ones who are telling you that you should be a writer. That confirmation, though it is a positive confirmation, it's an encouragement because it's coming from a source from a person who leads you away from the faith, that leads you into sin, away from God, you should receive that as a negative confirmation. And if someone is saying to you, and this is someone who is a positive influence on your life, there's someone who leads you closer to God, that makes, uh, that encourages you to be a better person, and they are saying to you, actually bro, I don't think you should be a writer, or I don't think you should work for that newspaper, or I don't think you should hear that negative discouragement as a positive, and vice versa. If someone who's leading you away from God, leading you away from the faith, leading you into sin, is saying to you, don't do this, do this instead, you'd be better doing something else. That discouragement from a negative source should be heard as an encouragement. And vice versa, if someone who leads you closer to God, someone who encourages you to be a better Christian, is saying to you, um, you should do this, then you should hear that as a positive encouragement because it's coming from a positive source. And so you should listen to these confirmations and ultimately, what should line up, you should find in yourself an inspiration and a desire to pursue a particular passion. And that should be there before you've even thought about vocation. It, it should be something that you find yourself doing. And that thing should not contradict scripture. So. You, it doesn't matter how good a dancer you are, you've never got a vocation to be a stripper, ever. It just doesn't work. Yeah? Your vocation should be something that is based upon, that, that doesn't contradict scripture, that you have a natural talent for, that you are finding opportunity to do, and that people, the, 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 the council of saints who know you best and who love you most, are saying that it is good to do, and you're getting confirmations, positive and negative, from the right kinds of people. So negative influences will be discouraging you to do it, and positive influences will be encouraging you to do it. And when all of these things line up, in a straight line, you have found your vocation. That is your vocation. So, that, mm, then, so let's use writer as an example. So you've got the passion, the interest for it. It's not contradicting scripture. It is something that, that you are, you've got a skill for, a natural skill. People are observing that skill. They've, they've noticed that you have that skill. You have the opportunity to do it. You are getting the right confirmations and encouragements from your council of saints and confirmations and encouragements, negative and positive from the right kinds of people. Then the question is, how do you express that? If you've got that vocation, does that mean that God is calling you to write a book? Does that mean that he is calling you to write a blog? Does that mean he is calling you to write for a newspaper, to become a journalist? What is How you express that needs to be explored. And the way that you explore it is that you walk the path. And you walk the path to, to identify if, it's, if it suits you, if it's ticking those boxes. And as it does so, then you've discovered your vocation. So you might find that you try to write for a newspaper, but when you write for the newspaper, you end up starting to damage yourself. You start to lie you start to be dishonest. That, mean, that doesn't mean that you're not called to be a writer, it just means that perhaps you're not called to write for a newspaper, or not that newspaper. So you might try a different newspaper, you might try a blog, and you might find that people are receptive to the blog, and actually you're impacting people through the blog. You're not making any money from it, because money's got nothing to do with this. You know, any making any money through it, you still got to go out and work. That means that it is something 
that, that that vocation is having an impact and it's making you a better person in the process. That's your vocation. And you might find that you may be able to make money out of it later through advertisements. And that's fine. There's no problem in making money out of your vocation. Unless, of course, your vocation is to be a monk who's taken a vow of poverty. But insofar as your vocation doesn't contradict the idea of making money, you can do so. So, that is a short talk on vocation. And I hope it is useful to you. So this is Bob signing out from the lovely island in the middle of the Atlantic known as Madeira. Thank you.